Questions for Coach Babers. We've got our first hand up in the air on the right side, third row. Uh, Coach Babers, uh, Richard Walker with the Gaston Gazette. Uh, Mo Neal was, was an early enrollee and made an impact in your spring game. Talk about how he's doing and what you expect out of him this year. You know, I don't like to get into individual uh, comments about certain individuals. What I will do, I'll talk about Kenneth Ruff, uh, Rex Culpepper, and O'Neill. Those were our three early admits, mid-year admits, and all three of those freshmen have done a fabulous job of, of learning the right things to do as far as getting to class and getting on time and representing the university in a proper manner. <laughs> Excuse me, one thing that I thought that uh, the, Sy the football team at Syracuse did a great job of bringing them into the family, into the La Familia, the Ohana, and, and showing them the ropes and teaching them right from wrong when they didn't know exactly what they should be doing in a, cer in a certain situation. We're excited about all three of those freshmen, and we think that they're all going to help the family. Coach, hard left against the wall where you see the uplighting. Hi, Coach. Tom Shanahan from todaysu.com. Can you use your California roots to recruit to an upstate New York school? You know, my California roots aren't really California roots. I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. I started school in Norfolk, Virginia. I graduated high school in San Diego, California, and I lived everywhere in between. I had an opportunity to play professionally up at British Columbia in Canada. My dad was 20 years military, and we used to drive down the road and say that was a good box and stop because we could use that for moving. We moved a lot. So uh, I wouldn't say that my roots are just in California. I think the life that I was raised in was the proper life to be a coach. And uh, I'm proud of all the different communities that I was a part of. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of the Syracuse community as well. Coach, to your right, first row with Dan. Coach, when you look at the team as a whole through your first spring, the personnel, the talents, and the abilities of what you're trying to institute offensively and defensively, how have the units responded to what you and your coaching staff have put in? I, I thought that the young men at Syracuse were extremely hungry. And uh, even though we have a lot of young men coming back on offense and defense, they're doing stuff that's totally different. The defense that was played last year was more aggressive than what we're going to play. The offense was a lot slower than what we were going to play, and that's not even including the special teams. But I thought they did a nice job of embracing it. I think Zaire touched on it uh, just recently, that they, took, they, they really went after it, and uh, they were trying to give us exactly what we were asking for on the football field. And I think the, uh, the onus is on the football staff to make sure you know exactly what you want, and you, and you speak very clearly, and there's no gray and the way you explain things to young men, because I believe that all young men want discipline. Discipline. I think they all want to be consistently good, not occasionally great. And if you ask for the right thing, I think they'll give it to you. Coach Hard left, second row. Uh, Coach Corey McCartney of Fox Sports South. You go to take over Bowling Green coming off a MAC title, and certainly not the same level of success here recently with Syracuse. Is there a different approach to? Uh, rejuvenating a program as opposed to just you know maintaining success? Uh, before I went to uh, Bowling Green State University, my first head coaching job was at Eastern Illinois University. Uh, the coach there, Bob Spoo, a Hall of Fame coach at that level, 25 years at one university. Before that, he was uh, the quarterback whisperer at Purdue, Purdue University when they had all their great quarterbacks and a high school, Southern High School, uh, South Chicago high school coach before that. And I really felt, when I went into that program, they had won three games the previous two years, that there was a good football team there. They were just a little bit lost. And uh, I can still remember him catching me after a 5.30 a.m. workout. Him and I were working out at the same health club, and uh, the administration thought the team was really bad. All the reporters and the media thought the team was really bad, and it was going to take five years to rebuild that team. And he, he looked me dead in the eye with the best coaching voice in college football and said, Dino, you have a good team. And then he walked away. My spinal cord was still shaking. He, he still had that effect on me. And then I went back to the coaches and I said, you know what? We've got a good football team. We just got to coach them like they're going to be good. 
And we took that football team and we went from worst to first and won a conference championship. It's only happened three times in the OVC, in the history of the OVC. And one of the things I like to do, this is my third opportunity to start on a first year with a football team. I've been blessed. But one of the things I, want, I like to do is I don't like to put a ceiling and I don't like to put walls around us. I have no idea how we're going to do this year. But I can tell you this, we're going to prepare like we're going to win every single football game. And I expect the effort on the football field to be exactly that way. Coach, let's go to the very back of the room at the camera stand to the far right, red or orange shirt there. Gotcha. Thank you for the hand wave. No problem. Zach Glover, WDBJ, seven out of Roanoke. Uh, kind of piggybacking off of that, we've, we've got four new coaches in the ACC, you being one of them. We've heard a lot about change of culture. How do you hope to change the culture at Syracuse? You know, you know the, uh, I'm, I'm one of the four new coaches in the ACC, but all three of them went to the Coastal, and I'm the only one in the Atlantic. I'm not sure. I think I have a high IQ. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go back and check. You know, I, I, re I really think that if you're going to be the best, you have to play the best. I think the, uh, the Atlantic side of our conference is outstanding. When you have an opportunity to play Florida State, Clemson, Louisville, and that's, that's not talking about the other teams in the conference. That's a heavy road to tow right there. But the way I look at it, if, if you're going to win a championship, you should have an opportunity to play for a national championship. And if you can find a way to win the championship in the Atlantic and then find some kind of way to beat the, a team in the Coastal, that you should have an opportunity to play for a national championship. And I think that's what all young men and all coaches want. They want to have a, a fine experience at a, a prestigious university, get a quality education, and have an opportunity to play for championships in that order. Coach, left side, second row, we'll ask the individual to stand for a camera shot, please. Thank you, Coach. Welcome to the ACC. Thank you. I'm Mark Miller with uh, Pennsylvania Sports Network and Sports View Radio. And with me being back in Pennsylvania, everybody's real excited that Pitt and Penn State have renewed their rivalry. The question I get asked a lot is, when is Penn State's other big rival, Syracuse, going to come back on the schedule? Has there been any talks? Would you like to see the, the rivalry renewed? Well, I'll tell you what, I had an opportunity to coach at the University of Pittsburgh when Larry Fitzgerald was there under Walt Harris. And uh, they used to talk about that rivalry all the time and uh, what a fantastic rivalry that is. But I don't know if you've checked the, uh, the latest statistics out there on ESPN and all those preseason magazines, but someone told me that Syracuse University has the eighth toughest schedule in the country and that for the next two years that we will absolutely be in the top ten. And when you're playing a schedule like that and you're rebuilding a football team, I'm not quite sure we should add Penn State just yet. So give us a little time, let's work it around a little bit, and then we'll see what we can do about the Nittly Lions. Other questions for a coach out on the floor? We're going to go to our right side. John, if you would, the microphone about the fourth row back. And actually, we'll uh, get one supplanted right there. Coach Martin Rickman, Up Rock Sports. Uh, your practices in the spring are a little bit of a surprise for guys who maybe aren't used to it. How did the guys respond to the spring practices this year, and what did you see at the end of spring ball? Mark, th that question always makes me smile, okay? You, 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 you asked a dandy. You, when you put this style of football in, uh, this is the third time that I've seen a first day of spring ball practice underneath this system, and it always ends the exact same way with a bunch of big guys over trash cans, not saying much, shaking their heads. And when they get done with that so that I can speak to them and I look them dead in the eye and I tell them, that's the slowest practice we're ever going to have and we'll never be that slow again. And they're looking at me with doubt until you have the second practice and then the fifth, and then the tenth, and then the last practice. And then when you tell them that we can't start two-a-days at the tempo that we ended with the 15th practice, you've got to develop and you have to acquire more speed through the summer so that when two-a-days starts, we're on the 30th practice, the 31st practice when it comes to the speed part of it. 
And the thing that I'm really looking forward to at Syracuse University is that the second year is always faster than the first year. The first year is nothing but, I mean, it's like I'm sitting there watching reruns of Gilligan's Island. I'm like, okay, I know what's about to happen next. I mean, it's, it's kind of boring the first year. The second year is really cool. You really get to the tempo and the speed that you want. And the best thing about this story is I've never had an opportunity to go to a third year. So maybe that's undergraduate, graduate level, and doctorate degree. I've never gone to, to a third year before. I really hope I get an opportunity to go for a third year at Syracuse because that would be new water for me. I hope I answered your question. Coach, first row back at Dan here to your right. Coach, when you look at leadership, obviously you came in under Mark Coyle to look at John Wildhack and being a part of the committee that found him. Just what you can say about the leadership at the university and their investment in you and your future and what you're trying to do. Well, first of all, I think uh, I'm, I'm so excited that John Wildhack is with us. I mean, his reputation is something you don't have to talk about. Uh, I know that he may have, people may look at it and go, wow, that's a different hire. He may have some shortcomings as far as being an athletic director, but I think those shortcomings are in areas where we're extremely, extremely strong. And I think those areas are in hiring and firing coaches. You know, I think I have a good relationship with John. We're, we're just starting off, but I think it's kind of solid. And, you know, I looked him dead in the eye and I said, John, you know, Coach Beheim, he's solid. And Coach Q, he does a great job with the women's basketball team, both teams being in the Final Four. Los, lacrosse teams are outstanding, outstanding coaches. We have a very, very outstanding uh, classroom of coaches at Syracuse University. And, and the, the, the guy that's kind of being behind in the back of the classroom not getting, it's been getting it done is the football team. So uh, I really hope that we can move to the front of the class, so to speak. I understand what that means. And there's no doubt in my mind that John's going to give me every opportunity to be successful. And as long as he's going to do that, I think when he comes down the hall in four or five years, whether to say, hey, hell of a job, or hey, we're going to have to go a different direction, I think that uh, he'll give me the type of support where I'll be OK with it either way. Now, the one thing I will say is he could come down the hall and say, hey, you know what, we got to get you an extension with you. That would be really cool. So there's, there's, there's three ways that that story could end up. I'm kind of hoping for the other two and not the first one. Coach, a question from right here at the podium. You talk about how you know what your student athlete's tempo was going to be during the course of a startup. What's your personal tempo like as you take on a new job? You know, with the new jobs, I really, gotta, I really have to rely on my, uh, on my coaches. I have a, uh, I'm one of the coaches across the country that have the tendency to bring a lot of coaches with him when he moves. Uh, I'm OK with that stigma or that, uh, that label. I think if you want to start fast, you can't spend a lot of time coaching new coaches on what you want to do. And the one thing that we do, it's a little bit different. You know, it's not West Coast offense. It's not Don Coryell vertical stretch offense. You know, it's not June Jones and the run and shoot. So from an offensive standpoint, we want to start fast. Defensively, when you have defensive coaches that have never coached in our style of practice before, they they have growing pains. And that's OK. We've got two new coaches on defense this year, one new coach on offense. But those growing, those growing pains slow down the players. And the things that we don't want slowed down is our players. So as long as we come in with that core and we get the tempo to our players, our coaches will eventually catch up. They're all professionals. And we've got to hit the ground running the first year to get the tempo where we want to be at the second year, which normally happens somewhere between game four and six of the second year is when we really hit the tempo that we're looking for. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck this season. Thank you so much. Have a good day.